Hey there, this is Chef Haddad, uh, and I am talking to you from California in the United States. The local time is a little bit after 6 p.m., and I am really excited to be the first speaker for this round. Uh, I would like to say uh, that for people who are just coming or are new to the conference, to before you start asking uh, a bunch of questions and separate things, uh, or separate uh, posts, use the magnifying glass to search for some things that have been spoken about, whether you're looking for the events tab or uh, maybe looking for a specific talk. Uh, it may have already been asked. Um, also, Ruby is amazing at getting connected to everyone, um, but please let her sleep. She needs to sleep at some point. I know Ruby must sleep at some point. So uh, try to use that magnifying glass to search out your questions first before asking them. Um, now then, I'm going to try to do a little bit of video with using my photo booth, but I'm also going to be using my screen in order to look for any questions or comments that might pop up. I'm also going to be looking with some windows uh, over here. So uh, I might be flipping around a little bit. I'll do my best to go as slow as I can to, uh, and as methodically as I can to make sure we cover everything. Um, so let's get rolling. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about welcoming people to force-free training. Um, I would like to start out by coming clean. I'm a crossover person. Um, I originally trained dogs with uh, tugging on their leashes, um, I worked with a trainer that always started with slip leads and worked up uh, as needed to uh, prong collars, choke collars, uh, and electronic shock collars. Um, since I've done what I call seeing the light, um, I have been able to uh, get to know an amazing group of people in my own area, um, as well as in the online community. And in the last year with um, COVID and with the restrictions, shelter in place, your favorite phrase here. Uh, it's been really nice getting to know people online and I'm really grateful for people like Ruby who are uh, very active and interested in connecting with people. Um, a little bit about me, uh, my, pro my, my pronouns are she and her. Uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, that is historically a blue collar town with a uh, fringe uh, affluent areas. Um, I did have a very privileged bringing, uh, I had a privileged lifestyle growing up. Um, I never had to worry about being hungry. Um, I have family that loves me uh, and that we talk about feelings sometimes. Uh, and I have been able to have a secondary education outside of high school. Um, I have a fine arts degree um, and I like talking with people. Um, I used to say at networking meetings that I'll talk to anybody with a pulse. Um, the fun thing is I'm also fairly introverted where um, I do like to have a lot of time to myself. And again, that's where the internet has been a real big saving grace for me where um, I can intake people's uh, opinions, ideas, and conversations as I feel comfortable with them. Um, I do have a few health problems that I manage, and um, it's been really great being able to pause conversations and come back to them uh, when I'm able to. Um, I've been in the professional dog world for about two and a half years. Uh, I currently enrolled with the Academy for Dog Trainers, led by Jean Donaldson and her esteemed staff. Uh, I have been involved in caring for animals for over a decade, and I have worked and volunteered in shelters. Um, I like to focus on reactivity and hi, uh, <laughs> Jaisi, and Michelle. Um, I like to focus on reactivity and aggression. Those are the things that I love the best. Um, I have a soft spot for guard dogs. Uh, so give me your pities, Dobermans. Uh, Great Danes, formerly guard dogs, um, German Shepherds, anything Shepherdy um, that is used to look big and scary. That's a dog that I want to play with. Um, dogs that have bit people, great. I want to be their friend. Um, some people might say that's a little misguided. I just call that keeping things interesting. Um, with that in mind, 
Um, I did, before I came back to working with companion animals specifically as my main source of income and uh, main education that I'm seeking out, um, I was a personal trainer. And I was a personal trainer for, it feels like it was a decade. It feels like it was 30 years sometimes. But uh, there are some things that I've seen that have crossed over from that type of situation to here in the dog training world, um, as well as dog care, whether they're groomers, sitters, uh, walkers, um, you name it, massage therapists. Uh, I know a great uh, doggy massage therapist here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I want to try to bridge that gap between newcomers or people who have crossed over like I have, uh, and I want it to be done in a way that is helpful and that's how i came up with this talk um did i practice this talk no did i make notes yeah so we'll see what happens uh so let's start with defining things i find that when people are thrown a lot of words um and a lot of terms that maybe they are new uh to hearing them it has it can be kind of rough to uh absorb it it'd be like um us as dog professionals suddenly excuse me, being told a bunch of computer science terms, uh, and it's just you kind of gloss over. Same thing with uh, people that maybe are accountants suddenly being thrown into uh, the pit of marketing. They would be like, what? Why do I have to talk to other people? I just do the numbers. So with that, I would like to take a step back and also encourage you when you are working with new people, even though you said it a thousand times, you're going to say it a thousand and one times, how to uh, explain force free. Um, I did see in the the comment sections a little bit of back and forth about what the definition of force free is. Um, as our industry is currently unregulated, at least in the United States, which will be my reference for any type of rules, um, we set those definitions ourselves. Um, for me, force free means that when it comes to training, and management, we do least aversive as possible. So um, no hitting or smacking, no shoving around, no throwing. Um, you'd think you wouldn't have to say that in uh, 2021, but you do have to still say that out loud. Um, other things that it does not mean is just literally no application of force. Um, some people will argue, and you can if you want to, that leashes are considered force. Um, Sure, we can go down that route. Not right now. Uh, the, some people argue that um, head harnesses are aversive. Yeah, okay, I can see that. But I, I want to say that we can all agree that um, using force such as uh, electronic stimulation and uh, strangulation and different iterations of strangulation would be considered force. Um, and that's what we'll be working with uh, during this talk as far as what force free is not. Now what force free is, is we're changing dogs behaviors and their inclinations of what they're doing um, through positive influences. So we're going to add things that they like and we might take away things that they like, but we're not gonna do it in a form that is uh, applying force. So, um, I do think that negative punishment, negative means taking away, punishment means you want them to do the thing less. It can be uh, reasonable within the force-free world. Um, something like a timeout would be uh, a negative punishment. Um, so force-free does mean you can say, I don't like it when you do that. That's a way we can tell um, our pets that uh, we don't like what they're doing. Um, and we can also reinforce the uh, we can also reinforce what we want over and over and over again with treats, with engagement, with toys. Um, I would love to get drunk with some professionals sometime and talk about people who utilize praise only as a way to be positive reinforcement. Um, I think that. Uh, our dogs having to consider every move they make, whether or not we'll pay attention to them, is not the best way to utilize the force-free philosophy. Uh, I don't think that's a great way 
to get your dog to want to do anything, um, especially if it's a more aloof dog. Um, they're, they're not interested in what you want from them. They're more interested in what they can do. Imagine a, a livestock guardian breed dog who is like bred to do what is bred to do and is like lives with a sheep and you're like, Oh dude, I want to, I, it's like, I'll pay attention to you if you do it. Like, come on guys, come on. Oh, look at me talking shit already. Okay. What else? What else? Oh, um, another thing I hear, uh, about, uh, and I think I've done it. My, I have done it myself. I've had this conversation that, uh, whenever I, 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 Whenever it's a dangerous situation, whenever there's safety involved, I know there are people who are force-free that say, hey, not my place to do anything. For me, force-free means uh, 100% to do with training and management of behaviors and things that you're working on. When it comes to safety, that is a different situation. Um, if an animal or a person is hurting another animal or a person, um, I'm, I will intervene and I will utilize force um, in the form of grabbing, in the form of hitting if they won't let go of stuff. Um, I know that a bully, or a bully stick, excuse me, a uh, break stick and gaining control of the head is the best way to uh, get a dog to stop, not just hitting them. Um, please forgive me for saying that. Um, but we want, we need to help better educate the people um, who are coming to force free that it doesn't mean you can't stop something dangerous from occurring. Um, and that is something that I think holds some people back from force free, or it, it leaves a bad taste in their mouth that they're like, what, what happens if, and they throw out this extreme example, but I have had to pull dogs off of other dogs. Um, I am a dog walker in addition to getting into dog training. Um, I also do dog sitting. And there are dangerous situations where uh, I've had to physically intervene. Um, I've had to pick up animals. I've ha I haven't had to throw any yet, but I have had to uh, work with them in such a way that other people would consider aversive. And um, I think it's important to remember that when there is a, a dangerous situation at hand, it's going to be different. It just it is. Uh, you. Um, I used to help teach self-defense classes in the state of Illinois, uh, and my instructor emphasized that uh, self-defense in that state, which is the middle of the country for those who are not in the states, um, that uh, self-defense is a reasonable application of force to that equals or is less than the force that is being applied to you. So if a, if a dog mouths you, that doesn't mean you need to throw it across the room. That would not be a consider, that would not be a reasonable amount of force. If a dog is biting you and won't let go, then you're going to need to do something, uh, if, especially if they're like puncturing you, like that's serious. And um, I hope that those examples can help give you a better idea of how you can discuss this with other people who say, well, what about dangerous situation? We'll say, okay, you got to defend yourself. Um, side note, please take different martial arts and learn how to get out of bad situations. Um, I want you to be prepared on how to help yourself as well as how to help others. Um, okay, off the soapbox, back to dogs. Okay. So what... What does working with force-free or reward-based behavior, which means we reward the behavior we want, uh, what, how do we get the dog to stop doing what we don't like? Um, in order to do that, we can use a replacement behavior, which is often what we as trainers say to do, uh, or we can utilize a negative punishment where we remove the thing that they, the dog is wanting. Um, so we already talked a little bit about the negative, the aspect of taking away things the dogs like and bringing it back. Please don't ever do that with water, by the way. Um, the, the thing that happens though, is that people try to get their dog to do like five different things. Say they're jumping up on them 
and their dog, they're like, Sparky, I need you to stop. I need you to stop that. And uh, the dog's like, I'm just being a dog, bro. I'm trying to get your attention. So what you, what they might say is sit or down or go to your bed or blah, blah, blah. If your dog doesn't know how to do that in a relaxed time period, in a relaxed state where they can talk more, uh, or they talk more, where they can think about what they're doing, um, they're not going to be able to do it in a freaked out state. To um, use the example of the martial arts thing again, um, if you are getting punched in the face and and you you are wanting them to stop uh, or you have to get away, um, if you don't have practice having things coming at you really fast and in practicing stepping away, even just the stepping away thing, like you will be, you, you can be so shocked, like so surprised by that, that you may end up just standing still. Um, you need, it, it's important to practice the actions, the appropriate steps so that when the time comes or if the time comes, you can use it. So for people or people, for dogs who need to practice the appropriate behaviors we want, behaviors being action, we want them to do something else, we want to practice those sits, we want to practice those downs, we want to practice the go to your bed or go to your mat, nose touches. We want a dog to practice those in an easy win situation, so that is making it easy for them to succeed in that. Uh, then when it comes to showtime with their jumping up on your grandma, you can say, Sparky, go to your bed. And he'll be like, oh, I know what to do. And he'll trot over. And then he'll be like, da-da, I did it. What do I get? And that's what we want, right? Like, if that's how we get our dogs to listen to us is we, we have them put practice the behaviors we like in a lower, uh, in a low stakes situation. Let me check here. Um, mm, something else. Uh, we see this, I see this a lot with my clients, uh, whether it's a walking client just talking during pickup and drop off or uh, people that I'm, I'm working with on uh, some basic behavior work. Um, they get really frustrated about something the dog keeps doing. And they say they know, they know what they, I want them to do, but they keep, doing the thing I don't like. The training isn't working. Let's take a step back. Um, the training can work. It needs to be practiced. So again, we want to practice, take a step back, lower the stakes a little bit, give those easy wins, practice training in a low stimulation area. So um, not out in a busy street, not around a bunch of noisy kids not with their litter mates or a bunch of puppy friends, not with music blaring. Um, we want to lower the stimulation, like all the other things that are going on, and that will help your dog succeed better um, or more like, be more likely to succeed. Um, we as trainers, um, we have practiced these movements so well, we can like do them in our sleep, right? Like everybody can do that straight down uh, to get the dog to, to put their – they're, to drop down into a little sphinx and it's like, okay, woohoo, I did it. Um, but for someone who's not used to creating that plumb line, that straight line from wherever the dog's nose is to the ground, like that's really hard for them to do. Um, especially for people that aren't very body aware, it's very difficult to get that straight line. Um, we can all think to uh, clients or ourselves, from the past to when they first start, like their line doesn't do this. It goes, it's, it's kind of floating, right? Like they're not committing to the straight line and, and that's okay. So um, something I like to tell my clients and I hope you do is that you're going to make mistakes and it's not the end of the world and it's going to be okay. Um, the practice makes permanent um, a really wonderful professional weightlifter uh, by the name of Tommy Kono would say that practice makes permanent. So um, that's where it's helpful to get a professional's opinion, uh, whether they're putting eyes on you or you're just reading the information they have. Um, so that when you practice, 
your line, you don't, you don't can start making hypotenuses of your right angle triangle. We want to get to that straight line to go straight down. Oh, look at me using geometry. Ooh. So, okay. So force free training. We talked about giving the dog easy wins. We want to avoid situations where they're going to be like, overstimulated when they're learning stuff and we want to slowly build up the intensity level of that other stuff going on around them whether it's um, another dog while they're on leash for reactivity um, if it is um, working with resource guarding with a food bowl like are you gonna throw down a, a freaking like cow femur for the dog to test with that like I'm pretty sure every dog is going to try to keep other other dogs away from them when they work on that. Like, don't start with the cow femur. Start with something less exciting and utilizing proper training protocols. Work towards that cow femur um, or, you know, moose, whatever is in your backyard. Um, so we want to work slowly, 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 incrementally up. And that can also be frustrating for owners and people new to training or just new to force free training because they want it to work right now um something that is important to remind everyone including ourselves is that training does not fix everything overnight um aversives tend to fix things very quickly and that it fixes the behavior the, the the action that's going on when it comes to reactivity and aggression what we do with force free though is we are changing the thought process behind it. And that takes longer to achieve. We Not only do we teach the dog that when I'm nervous and I bark, nothing happens. We want them to learn when I'm nervous, instead of barking at the thing, I should look at my handler or my mom because she knows what to do. She'll give me food and then she's going to lead my nose right out of there. Isn't that great? And then eventually... The hope is we're going to get to a part where the dog says, oh, look at that thing I want to bark at. Oh, I don't need to bark at it. I'm going to keep going. But that takes, excuse me, that takes dedicated training and repetition upon repetition. And then a lot of people don't have the patience for that. And a lot of people um, may not be able to have the patience for that. All right, excuse me a moment. Yes, at the martial arts analogy, um, I'm a big fan of martial arts. I'm not very good at it, but I'll try. Um, and I would encourage everyone, if they have the capacity mentally, fiscally, time-wise, to work on some type of ground thing, as well as something standing up, um, that would be great. Um, I hate jujitsu personally, but... I will still, I still know a few things from it because um, I want to be able to escape from somebody or a dog on top of me. One of the basic movements is um, just how to scramble from uh, if you have someone on top of you. Oh, excuse me. All right. <clears throat> so uh, something to talk about and something I think that we do need to acknowledge as force free trainers. Um, there's been a big push in our industry to charge what we're worth. I'm 100% behind that. Um, uh, bitches got to eat, bitches got to pay rent. Uh, so bitches got charge. And uh, I think that we all put time and energy and heart into what we do. And with that, we should get paid for it. We I don't think having three jobs is fun. Uh, I have had to do stuff like that, and um, I was miserable. I was making kind of enough money, and it, I didn't have enough brain space to dedicate to that. So I do urge all of us to find what we need to live, and, and not just live, but also to thrive, um, and work on charging that. But that's with an asterisk. Um, oof there's there's no way to pussyfoot around it um not everyone can afford dog training consistently um not everyone can spend six months 
of training two times a week, uh, whether their trainer is day training and then just gives them notes on what they're doing. Um, not everybody can do a uh, board and train for a month and then uh, do a couple handoff sessions and then do some cleanup sessions once a month. Like not everybody's bank account can do that. Um, we are working with people from all sorts of different backgrounds, uh, es ethnically, uh, culturally, uh, racially, monetarily, class, uh, you name it, we've got a lot going on. Um, and something that's very important for us to do is to be accessible to um, everyone, any, any pet owner that we have. Um, I would hope that we have all done a little bit of marketing practice where we have uh, talked to people that uh, help us with our marketing or advertising, um, which I have an online person I can recommend that she lives in California, um, and I have a group uh, that's their great uh, business advisor, consultant people for pet professionals that I can recommend. Um, but with that, we want to make sure that we are being accessible to everyone. Um, not everyone can afford training. Not everyone can afford to pay rent. Um, that people have to choose between, do I want to go to the movies back when we could go to the movies? Um, or do I want to eat all week? Um, these are things that some of us kind of forget about. Uh, maybe we've experienced in some capacity. Um, and I think it's important to remember that um, I do live in a very expensive area of California, which is an expensive area of the United States, uh, which is an expensive area in the Western world, in the Western hemisphere. And um, I think it's important to take a step back for us as professionals to give uh, options to people. Um, if you want to find a way to get your information out there, but still have a, a trickle of income, you can always have a set of videos that people could purchase. You could do a, a small, uh, maybe a monthly subscriber thing where people have access to your past webinars that you've given. Um, I know some of us uh, in our area, like I have I know people, like, I don't know what people charge, but I'll say, hey, here's the different levels of uh, experience these trainers have. This is the person who will probably be more expensive, but is the most knowledgeable. This is the person that is a little more new to training, but I trust her with my dog. Um, it's important to have your referral network of people and uh, try to have uh, up and down the gamut, whether you have somebody who's going to go like dress to the nines, everything uh, is like super handled and uh, like way education up to wazoo, like that's, that's great. But to also have uh, something that's more cost effective as far as what people can afford and what they can set aside um, in addition to everything else that they're paying for, that's not a bad idea. Um, another aspect of that is what we are putting out into the world uh, as far as the internet. Um, the internet is the information superhighway. Uh, it's accessible to anyone with uh, now with the phone connection, not just an internet connection. Um, it's amazing the stuff that's out there, which I wanted to show you guys. Um, let's see what, oh, you don't need to see my calendar. Da -da -da! Here's my Thing. Um, I think it's important for people to have um, a little bit of fun available online. So I like to just post cute pictures. Oh, there's a, hey, how conveniently placed. Look, an uh, article I wrote in Beowulf. Isn't that interesting? No. Uh, I mostly post with my own personal Instagram and Facebook page. Um, I post more humorous stuff. Um, I try to keep it light. Um, you know, dogs are cute, dogs are fun. Um, but I also will show, I don't think I have anything up right now. Um, I'll share other people's uh, work that they've posted. Um, Janice recently posted something here. Let me show you that. Uh, I love what, oh my goodness, all these notifications. 
Janice has, I, man, Janice, I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. But Janice has uh, made a real push lately to, and this is on her YouTube, where is it? Her YouTube, her Instagram, and her Facebook page. Um, she is part of our Science Over Shock group, and she uh, has taken the information she wants to share. She has made the language easier to understand um, newspapers from my understanding and, and print media tend to go for a 10th grade reading level. Um, she really grabbed onto that and I love, oh, she used the hashtag, that's great. And she made a video, which you're not gonna be able to hear. I'll be able to hear, let me turn that off so I can hear myself think. Um, so she, is giving an, a great example of uh, how desensitizing to sound can work. Here, hurt me, hurt me. So I really love the way that um, she did this. She used very slow, um, excuse me, slow frame. She doesn't flip through the words really fast. Um, she, oops, it paused. She uses video. Uh, from her dog and she explains it in a way that's easy to understand. Um, you don't have to have a linguistics degree to uh, read what she's writing. You also don't have to have a behaviors degree or behavior. <laughs> you, you don't have to have an animal behavior uh, degree to take a look at it. Um, this, I want to share this <laughs> everywhere. I think I already have. Um, she also shares information that people can find elsewhere. Um, this is a television show that's coming out with Chirag, and I'm sorry, I don't know the woman who's in this, but she seems delightful as well. Um, and that's directly from Chirag's page. Um, she also has static images. So basically it's not moving, it's just an infograph. And she it gives the basics in the image. She uh, has a cute little dog image right there. She has her website so people can find more information if they want. And then if you want, she has a breakdown as well. Um, I think that Janice has really grabbed this uh, getting in free content out for everyone uh, with by the horns, by both horns. Is that the metaphor? Um, she's really done it. Mindy, okay, my dog just, walked over my notes. Okay, you feel better? She just yawned to let me know she was comfortable. Oh, anyway, back to this. Um, I really like how Janice um, has applied this to what's online. So here's, here's your, she's fine. It's fine, I'm just live right now. Mm -hmm. She's fine. <laughs> Live. <laughs> um, Denise has just I I really like what uh, she's doing, and I suggest you follow her. It's Janice Z at uh, Janice Z Dog Training. Um, she has a website. She has a Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Please follow her. Um, Another way, who who else has been doing a really great job with this? Who did I put? Ah, Smart Bitch Training. Smart Bitch Modern Dog Training. Um, I love how these ladies do all sorts of things. They have a private Facebook group for people that are interested in dog training. I think it's their, for their clients. Yes, it's for their clients. Um, they also will do uh, live videos while they're driving from place to place. Um, they are hysterical and genuine and just, and really, really knowledgeable. Um, and they let you meet them where they're at and they meet their clients where they are at. Um, these ladies also will, oh, there it is. Way to go, ladies. They, there's, I don't wanna flip through too much here. Oh, they recently introduced, reintroduced themselves, which I think is great. Um, they also will post videos, like uh, update videos of their clients. And like Janice posted uh, her 
video about her dog getting desensitized to the beeping sound of her clicker thing. She also, uh, the the smart bitches, Giovanni and Taylor, also um, will put up videos with, uh, what's it called, captions. And that's fantastic for people who might be hard of hearing, uh, people that maybe are watching from a different language, but they can read whatever language you're speaking in. Um, I want to say... Who else did this? Nope, that's me. Okay, I don't have it. Don't have it up right now. Um, JW Dog Training does this really well um, as well. Um, Urban Uplander, I believe, they do that really well um, to boot. Uh, another thing you can do with your online presence is uh, post a ton of articles. Um, Stacy from Stacy's Wagon Train um, is. A very fastidious interneter um, and I love all the stuff that she posts and I need to like them more I, am, am I, I haven't been liking these things I'm showing you terrible I'm a terrible fan terrible supporter here we go so she shows uh, videos from other people she shows uh, articles from that have uh, great people being uh, spoken or speaking in them uh, she just like McSweeney's is a satire site. So she posts humor um, in addition to her actual clients, which where is she's been mostly doing online training right now. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is like, Stacy, where are they? Anyway, she'll uh, post on her Instagram of her clients that she's been working with. She'll even do screen captures from uh, their their uh, online stuff uh, while they're working together. And um, she's finding a way to connect her clients to each other as well as showing what she actually does. Um, that's something that a lot of people online are very good at doing uh, from, or is it from dusk till dog or till dusk till dog? Anyway, Erica Gonzalez is another great person uh, who puts out a ton of content um, that is pretty easy to understand. Um, what I hope you guys are picking up on this is that it's important to find ways to connect with people um, that is not just your way. Um, obviously, it is easiest when the people uh, look like you and grew up or grew up like you or both or neither. Um, I just found out of clients of mine that I really connected with. We grew up on opposite sides of the world, but we love all the same humor. Uh, it turns out we're the same age. <laughs> so we grew up in the same time period. Um, and we we can't expect all of our clients to be, to have the same sense of humor as us or to have the same uh, working style as us. But what we can do is we can find ways, different ways for them to connect. Um, there's plenty of people who are my age who I, we, it's like we're speaking different languages to each other or um, they, they don't, they kind of, they can't get past their own fear of uh, failing at what they're doing. And I, those are the people that I emphasize that you will make mistakes and that's okay. Like we all make mistakes. I know I still make mistakes. Um, like my dog just freaking, she walked all over my notes. It was okay wasn't the end of the world. I didn't have to yell at her. She's snuggled up right now. Um, if you have any questions, while well, I reference my notes right now, um, please put them over in the comment section and I'll see if I can address them. Um, yes, Trog is awesome. He's so uh, easy to listen to. Um, it helps that he has a very lovely voice. Um, hi, Lindsay. Oh, let's see, Edmonton. Uh, San Diego, Toronto, two Michelles, Mississippi. Oh, that Tracy lady. She's nice. Uh, okay. So let me take a look at my notes.
things to consider. This is a, some notes that I took. Um, this especially happens, um, or this can happen on days where maybe you're not feeling your best. Maybe you have a lot of back-to-back -back clients. Um, you're running around a lot, either through your facility or um, driving from client to client. Um, that can mess you up real fast where um, you're just focused on what's the next thing I have to do, what's the next thing on my list. Um, Ellen, I would like to encourage you um, to tell yourself, but also to tell your clients that, um, especially when they're new to force-free training, is that um, they're not going to know what they don't know. We don't know uh, anything, uh, like maybe we're going to a new client. We already did a consult, and now we're coming in person to them. Um, we still don't know what we're going to see until we get there. Our clients still aren't going to know um, proper uh, feeding for position technical movement like they're just they're not going to know and that's okay um and that's that try to be kind to yourself being force free isn't just being force free to animals it's also being force free to human beings as well um every client that we have is uh, a fresh a new slate so um even though we know what we know they just they don't right so we need to find ways to pay attention to how they communicate whether they're more passive in how they deliver information. Uh, maybe they take a few more moments before they start speaking. Um, in those cases, I'm, I am a, a chatty Cathy, so I will talk a lot, especially if a person is quiet. And I have had to learn to reel it in and to take more spaces in between uh, the information points that I'm giving so that those people can absorb it, consider it, and respond. Um, with that, something that can be very helpful uh, and to give to your clients as well as yourself is ask the question, do you have any questions? Um, please do not say, does that make sense? Because they're just going to say yes. And even if they don't know, they're just going to say yes. Um, try to ask open-ended questions that don't end or that are not responded with a yes or a no. Um, and try to give your own clients easy wins. So if you go over a new step in, in a protocol or uh, whatever, um, stop, take a step back and say, okay, can you tell me how to do that in your own words? That helps people translate things into how they would talk about it that also allows them to take their own mental notes, um, just like how uh, writing notes is found to be a better way to remember things rather than typing them. Uh, having someone not only go through the steps of how they're going to respond to their dog's bad behavior um, and then allowing them to say it back to you is going to help them remember it better. Um, we can't constantly be sending uh, summary notes to them if they're not remembering anything. Um, I think we've all been to places where we get a summarization. We go, great, I'll look at it later. And then later is maybe five years. It's not so great. Um, every person comes with their own experiences. Um, I did mention culture, ethnicity, and race earlier. Um, some people are a struggle with understanding that people grow up in different ways um, and have different experiences, even in their daily lives. Um, I would encourage you to help fill in those gaps uh, during your sessions by asking those open-ended questions. So not expecting a yes or a no, but say how, say, ask uh, your client, how can you apply this in your normal day to day? Um, how do you, tag teach do you use tag teach i find that helpful with people understanding mechanics Seth, can you tell me what tag teach is i don't actually know what that is so i guess the answer is no um but if you can reply with uh what tag teaches i don't know if it's a is it a methodology or is it just working with two different people i don't know 
oh no, I lost my train of thought. I'm at the station. It has gone. What was I talking about? Oh, finding ways uh, to connect the dots. Um, please ask your clients questions and maybe don't cover as much as you normally would. Uh, I would rather over plan and not hit everything rather than only plan for one thing and then be like, oh no, where do I go? Um, it's okay if you have to move to your next, you, to move your, uh, what you want to cover into your next session. It's more important to do one thing right or a few things right, rather than a bunch of things kind of not so great. Um, other things to consider, um, to working with people as they are your fellow, uh, fellow human being goes a lot further than I am the teacher you are the student. Like um, having power dynamics is kind of weird. Um, some people will thrive on it. Um, I found better luck with uh, letting people talk things out and try to keep everybody on the same level. Um, that definitely helps um, people feel empowered rather than like, oh, I'm never gonna understand this. This is just too much. Um, it it goes a long, long way, um, especially with people that maybe have chronic illnesses or um, disabilities or just uh, they they have need to accommodate themselves differently in order to get around in their day to day life. Um, saying, oh, well, I just, you know, I prepare my treats, I boil a bunch of chicken uh, every Monday night and then I have all da 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 da. Maybe somebody doesn't have enough energy to do that. They literally do not have enough energy. So um, always find a way to accommodate. Maybe um, they can purchase things prepackaged on Chewy. Um, maybe they can, if they have the financial ability to do so, they could hire a, a meal prepper. Um, if uh, finding different ways to hold treats other than just a, a treat pouch or a bait pouch, um, like zippers can be great zippers can be evil buttons are great magnets can be good um try to find ways try to find three different ways to do things um a way this translates from personal training is um, whenever you teach a group exercise class um the instructors i like the best always offered three different variations of the same movement um for instance let's say we're doing a squat and a squat is a sitting down motion, but you don't have anything underneath your butt. So let's say uh, you have uh, three different people with three different levels of athleticism or ability. Um, so for one person, you could say, okay, I want you to stick your butt out and uh, push, your, push your feet down so that it feels like when you sit that your legs are holding you up. Um, for another person who maybe has better flexibility, you say, okay, um, let's have your feet out a little bit wider and push, sit your butt down uh, as low as your heels. Um, for somebody who's maybe recovering from an injury or they just, their knees don't move very well, you say, okay, I want you to actually sit down on a bench, but as you do it, I want you to uh, push down with your heels or with the back end of your feet so that you can feel your butt muscles while you're sitting down and then push up in those same parts. That's three different ways to do the same movement. Uh, same thing applies to training with people and dogs. Um, you can ha say, for instance, for a look at that, like the end, game, the end goal is we want to say, look at that to the dog and the dog looks for something, puts zones in on it and you say, yes, good. And then they turn to you and get a treat. Um, that That's even the middle ground. Um, to go even further, you say, look at that. And the dog looks and then looks back at you and you say, yeah, like that would be, you know, what we're aiming for. But to expect that to happen overnight, um, that's not fair to anyone. Uh, that's not fair to the dog. It's not fair to the people. Uh, you would want 
to uh, instead just start with, you know, guessing, like anytime the dog goes, what's that? You just say, yeah, and then lure the dog away, right? Like that's what we start with. What if the person doesn't understand the word lure? How, what's a different way we can say that? Say, okay, so, and we do this before we put the dog in, in the human in a situation where this needs to happen and say, okay, whenever your dog sees something, you're going to say yes, and you're going to pelt them with treats. No, I'm kidding. You're going to move a treat towards their face and lead them away. I just said lure the dog when it sees something without saying that. So even just trying different terms sometimes will be super duper helpful in helping somebody connect the dots for training. Maybe you can eventually move to the word luring. Um, maybe not. But being able to be flexible in how you word things is going to go a long, 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 long way into helping people feel more comfortable with force-free training. Um, uh, one more thing, and then I will wrap things up for everyone. We've got a whole bunch of other people here um, that are excited to speak. One other thing is, excuse me, to swing back to the content thing and what we're putting out. Remember that we may not be able to spend the, a dog's whole life with that, that family, but we can always have resources for them that are available uh, online or maybe through a book or something. And it's important to make those things available to people um excuse me oh my goodness um and again that takes me back to the have accessible content uh accessible meaning uh information that can be read uh in easy to understand terms i'm not going to say dumb it down because dumb it down implies that um it's for stupid people. It's not for stupid people. It's for people that are learning this whole new language and this whole new way to work with animals. Um, and so we've got language. We've also, it, it's also important to get people who uh, may not look like us, uh, people from different backgrounds, different countries, uh, different races, different upbringings, different uh, classes. We want to have resources from all different types of people that look all different type of ways so that anybody that looks at our content can say, that person looks like me and they're doing it. Maybe I can do it too. Um, they, people may not say that out loud when they see it, but they will feel it. Um, I know that in the fitness industry, which I will continue to refer to tonight, um, that when I would see uh, like CrossFit or something, and I'd see these gals with their perfect blonde hair and their perfect abs and their um, tiny waist and um, their perfect clothes, even their clothes was perfect, and they'd lift these heavy weights over their head or they'd be on like ninja warrior and they'd run around and be able to do flips and stuff i would be like there's no way there's no way i can ever look as cool as them there's no way i can i can get that level of athleticism um but when i see trainers who don't look like fitness models and i'm not saying they're still not posed like they're still they're still gonna look pretty good like but they might be different weight sizes. They may have different levels of flexibility. Um, they may have different types of experiences. When I see someone that has my body shape and is still kicking ass with lifting weights, which used to be really important to me, that made, that made me feel good. And that made me feel like I could do it. And then uh, from there, uh, I got more interested in like MMA type stuff, mixed martial arts. And Seeing women my height in my weight bracket 
uh, doing these amazing fighting things um, rather than the MMA people who are like um, the 100-pounder. Uh, do they call it flyweight? I don't remember. But the seeing people who are teeny, teeny, tiny and doing all these cool moves, I was like, okay, that's great, but I'm an Amazonian monster. No way I could do that. And then you have these other accomplished athletes who are 5'8". Uh, I'm 5'8". Uh, who who are tough broads that are Amazons. Um, granted, they do, just like all fighters, have to cut weight and stuff, uh, which we can get into that some other time. Uh, but these women are my age and my size uh, competing, made me feel like I could do it. And that really helped me um, during a time where I had a mental block as far as what I was able to accomplish um, with my own body and I was kicking ass. Uh, I was having a fun time with my training and was I going to compete in anything official? No, but did I hit that bag harder the next class that I was in? Hell yeah. Did I beat my friend up a way harder than normal? Yes, I did. And he was laughing the entire time. Oh, he's a funny guy. Anyway. Uh, so with that, let's, let's move that back to the dog industry. So, if people can see people that look like them accomplishing these amazing things, will they be competing in a crazy agility tournaments where they got the crazy pole weaving and the tunnels and everything? No, but they could have fun doing it. Will they uh, have their dog do protection bite work? Uh, probably not. Will they be doing any type of hunting, like official hunting with their dogs, like going out into the, the pond so that they can shoot some ducks? Maybe not, but teaching a retrieve sure is fun, right? So like maybe they have an English Springer Spaniel and they want to go hiking with it. End of situation. That's doable. That You can still teach a great recall without a shock collar uh, with a dog that's built to work. It's still possible. It's going to take work, but all good things take some work, right? Um, here, let's take a look at the side. Industry jargon jargon is a barrier for other simple. Yeah, um, it's it's no fun when you don't feel like you belong. And um, I'm not saying that there's a cool kids club in dog training. Maybe there is, and I just totally missed it. But uh, I think that for us to be able to use different types of words for people that are new um, and people who aren't going to be in these super duper competitions. Uh, even like show dogs, right? Like that's a whole other thing that uh, has their own language and uh, standards and things they're looking for in their dogs, uh, how they perform when they're on stage, when they're in the ring. Um, we just, we, we just, it's nice when things are nice. So let's be nice, you know? Um, so that's, that's pretty much it that I had planned for today. Um, I'm absolutely, uh, would love to take questions. Um, I think I have information for me. If you like me, if you like my words, rather the stuff that I said here, this is the more important thing. Look at pictures of my dog. Um, you can find me and good sit dog walking and pet sitting services uh, over in California. Uh, I am also an admin for the Science Over Shock group. Uh, right now we have a private Facebook group for professionals. Uh, we are only open to professionals right now. If you're interested in joining as a professional, um, please make sure you fill out all the questions and agree to the rules. They are there for a reason. Um, if you're interested in watching what we're doing, uh, you can follow me on Good Sit Dog Walking for the shenanigans that my direct clients and I are doing. You can also follow Science Over Shock, where right now we are, I can show you, we are reposting great information from people like you. Um, here we go. Here's a great uh, example of using the captions. Please load. Yes, there we go. Great. So Rachel Forde uh, has a client here who is learning the one, two, three pattern 
dealing with uh, overstimulation within the environment. Um, and she, you can see, uses captioning. It's nice. It's nice when things are nice. Oh, that was something. Sorry. Um, what we're doing right now with Science Over Shock on the Instagram page is we are reposting videos and helpful information. Uh, we are doing what we can to showcase all these great force-free people. Uh, and we, I do my best. I, I am the person that does the posting. I do always have the um, repost tag on here so that these people get credit because my hope is that by having an aggregate source, a.k.a. a place that it has a whole bunch of different things where people can find them easily, that we can get all the people being reposted to be followed. This is one of my colleagues in San Jose posted a group class. And something that she did that helped me find her better is that she used the hashtag science over shock. Um, if you guys are interested in joining the conversation and in helping people uh, get better exposure to force-free training, reward-based training, Lima type things, um, please use this hashtag and we will repost you. Um, we'll also post internet memes, that's the Fenton video. This is a great write-up from the Stoke Dog. Yeah, Stoke Dog. Uh, and I'm doing what I can to get them from all over the world, I would prefer to get it from everywhere. Are dogs the focus? Absolutely. Do the trainers end up in it? Yep, check right there. No pain, just train. Enriched dog training. A to B positive over in Europe. Love her. We've got before and after videos. We've got little infographs that help introduce ideas. This is also a great thing to follow to get your own ideas. This is a before and after. To get your own ideas on what to charge, or charge, excuse me, on what to post. Um, this is, where are they? Here's the smart bitch gals I told you about. So here's a great uh, video update of their client. Again, they have the captions. They also are explaining what they're doing and they're showcasing the dog. Dog's most important thing, right? So making sure the dog is in it. And here's an explanation in writing. If video is a real treat to work on and I hope that I can continue to do it. Um, we've also got a science over shock Facebook page. Um, we are not currently doubling up the Instagram and Facebook pages. Um, what you can do right now, though, is if you're interested in, again, being part of the conversation with your Facebook post that you make, please tag us, Science Over Shock. You can use the, the at. We do want you to add us, in fact. Um, and we are posting things that are easy to share. Yay. And take a look here. So this is an explanation. Uh, well, it's pretty funny. Like people think dog trainers just have magic wands. Here's a picture of all our gear that we can use. And I've said you can purchase as new or find them pre-loved in a variety of different places. Um, I know that I like to utilize those things. And maybe for clients who uh, currently cannot spend hundreds of dollars every month on their dogs. This is a great way for uh, to remind them that it's perfectly accessible to get your crate on Craigslist. Um, it's perfectly acceptable to get your <laughs> treat bags from, from Facebook uh, Marketplace. 
We also try to feature different professionals that have been fantastic as well as education. There's Janice singing again, so good. Um, this, I, I just, I love, I love being able to do this. This is great. Um, a few of the admins and I um, are lining up stuff for everybody to use. Sometimes they create conversation. Uh, sometimes it's just hearts and likes. Um, please like us, please tag us. Uh, we want to share your information and we want more eyeballs on what you're doing so that we can share all the cool stuff that we're doing. Um, and to end this um, and to emphasize the sharing thing, I think I have, where's that page? I have action items for everyone. Oh boy. So we've got one for professionals and one for people who are not professionals, but you are here for the ride and I thank you for it. Um, let's spread the good word in person, not just online. Um, there's different ways to do that that are currently available. Uh, there are meetups, oh God, I'm so wrong. There are meetups that you can use um, via the website meetup. Um, you can also see if there are groups that a professional you've worked with may maintain. I know I personally will do uh, dog park socials. Uh, I call them dog parties because I feel like when you call them socials, it sounds like a sock hop. Uh, you can use social if you want. Um, sometimes rescues, uh, breed enthusiasts, sport enthusiasts, like uh, gun dogs in particular, or maybe agility. Um, I know we have an active Aussie Shepherd group that everybody who has minis to regular types will bring them, tails and no tails. Um, making a referral group, whether you do something super official uh, related to force free training and uh, animal handling through Facebook or maybe on Nextdoor um, professionals, I will also add. This one, um, you, having a professional group of people that live in your area leads to having a reliable group of people that you can send referrals to. We cannot save them all on our own. We must work together. Um, for uh, owners, parents, enthusiasts, um, you, networking, even if it's just to get good veterinary referrals and even to vet the pros, uh, not just the veterinarians. Um, having groups, play groups together is a fantastic way to for yourself to socialize, but also your dog, if your dog is dog friendly and likes that sort of thing. Um, let's keep it moving. So uh, these things will be, will do nothing but help you. Um, you may end up making new friends. Your dog will end up meeting new friends. Um, but staying connected is one of the best things you can do in the force free community. Um, sharing our knowledge resources, sharing um, stuff online, maybe emailing people, sharing people, uh, excuse me, sharing uh, the cool new thing you learned, maybe a new book or an article that you read. Um, finding ways to work with people uh, socially and meeting them where they're at is, in my opinion, the best way to grow our community of 4-3 professionals. Um, and yeah, and again, this is my dog, Mindy. Um, I'm going to make my face disappear so that I can have the whole <laughs> space again. Um, if you'd like to stay in contact with me, Instagram is really the best way to reach me right now. Um, I guess I'm secretly a 14 year old, uh, although I heard TikTok is or TikTok. Oh my God, TikTok is the best way to get in contact with people. Um, I love my dog. I update her on Instagram with interesting dog. Again, I keep tabs on Science Over Shock to make sure to share the latest and greatest that are accessible for everybody. Um, Good Sit Dog Walking is my personal company, and I love every second of it. Um, if you want to email me, I should probably do that. 
you can do so at science or say hi at scienceovershock.com. Um, that is our SOS email where anybody can contact us, and I hope you will. I hope you will be part of this uh, amazing group of people that care about animals, and I hope that you will do so with kindness and that you will also do it with other people. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, Please feel free to DM me on Facebook. Uh, please feel free to follow all the things that I listed. Um, it's been a pleasure, Ruby. Thanks for doing this again. And I think I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> thanks so much. I'll see you guys next week.